Peggy 16. Said, getting them off the ground is kind of an overlooked topic uh, for a lot of new players and generally the safest thing to do is to tech roll where you're just going to hit either punches or kicks when you're on the ground. I'm going to let Mike talk about it all though so Mike take it away. Alright so to tech roll in this game there's two different options to tech roll. You could either tech roll into the background or into the foreground and the easy way to think about it is that your button map is your your stage. So the top mm -hmm. part is the background and the bottom part is your foreground. So the top buttons are obviously one or two, which is your punches, so that will tech roll you into the background, and the kicks will tech roll you into the foreground. So I'll give a small example here by knocking lay down the launcher, and then he's going to tech roll that. He used punches to tech roll into the background. This one he's going to tech roll into the foreground with using kicks. So you can use either of the buttons. You can just slide the buttons if you want to tech roll. Right, and generally you want to roll away from a wall. Like yeah. to make yourself distance, basically. Yeah, you can also use tech rolls off the wall as well. So, let's see. so you can tech roll off the wall as well, and it's the same idea as again. Um, generally, tech rolls are a safer option to get off the ground, and it is the quickest way. Mm -hmm. But there are things called tech traps as well that you have to look out for. Right, but in general, you want to tech roll off the wall. But let's show them an example of where you wouldn't want to tech roll off the wall. You've got Brian in there. Brian has a taunt, which is an unblockable attack. So basically, after he hits his wall combo, if Lay player is gonna tech, then Brian can actually hit his unblockable taunt on him. Man. Okay, so that's a small example of a tech cat situation, but at the wall you can actually tech roll late as well, right? Do we want to show them that really quickly? Yeah, you could delay your tech catch, uh, your tech roll timing, um, while you're still sliding down the walls. Yeah. Nice. Cool. So I think that about covers tech rolls, right? Let's go ahead and talk about side rolls and back rolls. So basically, whenever you are spiked on the ground, like uh, let's say I'm gonna launch lay here and then uh, use a bind move and then a spike move to slam him down to the ground. In those situations, you cannot tech roll off the ground because you are slammed onto the ground. And the only situations you can tech roll are when you're thrown to the ground and like let's say something like this. He's still floating, and then he lands on the ground. I didn't slam him down to the ground, so he can tech roll in those situations. But when I slam him to the ground, we call that a spike. Those you can't tech roll, and you have other options instead. And you have all these options all the time anyways, but it's just up to you if you want to use your tech roll right away or if you want to stay grounded. Another example of a hard knockdown in this game would be like throws. So throws you can't tech roll off of except of certain few exceptions. Um, generally throws are going to leave you in this state where you have to you know, guess right away and you can't tech roll off of. So there is, the first thing I want to talk about is side rolling. Um, to do a side roll, you press one, and then that will side roll you into the background. And if you hold down after doing the side roll, you can continue to stay down on the ground. But keep in mind, you are only limited to one side roll while you're on the ground, unless you get hit on the ground again. So he's trying to side roll again, he's mashing on one, he can't do anything until I hit hit him on the ground. Oh, and also, you could also tech roll off the ground if you get hit again as well. Um, so yeah, to hit him, you can you know, tech roll right away, or you can choose to still stay grounded and then side roll again if you wanted to, side roll again. And there is four basic uh, grounded positions in this game. The most basic one is face up, feet towards. And these are usually ac uh, acronymed by four letter acronyms by F, U, F, T, Excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, that basically means face up, feet towards, or you can have face up, head towards, or what have you. And uh, yeah, so this is basically the most general knockdown position that you'll have. Yeah, let's go ahead and show the positions. And generally, the acronym is actually face up, feet something. Yeah. Right, those are the. You should basically go where the faces and where the feet down. Yeah. Face up or down, or <laughs> feet towards or feet away. Right, and between those options, you have four combinations. Yes. Am I right here? Yes. <laughs> okay. Right. Sounds about right. So let's show them the four, op four options, Bob. All right. So we have your 
face up, feet towards. You have your face down, feet towards. Face down, feet, feet away. away. And you guessed it. Face, face up, up, feet away. away. <laughs> wow. And obviously, there's only Lei that can do all these uh, positions for us. You know, this isn't like something every character can this do. It's a convenience to. for us. Right? Yeah, it's <laughs> a convenience for us to show you this. <laughs> Thank you, Lei. Uh, Right, so basically the way you're going to be left in those positions is if after certain comments you get spiked and then you're in that situation or after maybe certain throws. They yeah, leave generally positions throws, as well. um, you're left in like a hard knockdown position. Mm -hmm. So you can't tech roll. Some throws you can, but those are very rare. Yeah, and so kind of an advanced so strategy if you're scared of how to get up against your opponent is to just take one another round and tech roll immediately. And yeah. this is generally the safest option you have. Yeah, because generally if you back roll in certain situations, you can eat massive damage and you can get screwed or like a rebound really yeah right. exactly well, let's just show a small quick example here with Brian's one throw and what can happen if you back roll oh yeah and then you can get into a <coughs> combo and then what have you you just lost like throw damage and a full combo on your back so that's because you rolled okay so generally back rolling though is also a really bad option from any knockdown. Yeah. Right, because you can get picked up by like lots of things by every character basically. Mm -hmm. Every character has an option generally to pack back. Even in situations where you can tech roll, if you choose to back roll afterwards, mm -hmm. you're left, um, even not when you're back turned as well, you can also eat a full combo. So let's say he back rolls, yeah, right there. I can time it so that he gets up, and he actually, the character actually gets up and crouching for a few frames. Well, okay. For a bit. So if I, and just get a full launcher again. For right. Back roll. Yeah. So when he's facing forward. So. Right. So let's show that exact same setup again and show Bob tech rolling instead. Yeah. So right. Either it whips or he can block it and then I'm screwed. Right. In general, so. Cool. And so, okay. So basically, those are the basic ways to get up off the ground. But we still haven't really shown them from the different positions which ones are dangerous and which ones aren't that dangerous. Okay. So, so let's go to show them that. Really yeah, quick. next thing we talk about, let's talk about how you can attack when you're on the ground positions. We have low, uh, low kick and mid kick. So threes are going to be your low kick. Um, in any general rule of thumb, easy way to remember it, heads up is whenever your character's face up, your threes will not will knock down unless they're counter hit. So let's just show it on normal hit. It doesn't get a combo on a counter hit, let's show them getting a knockdown. On counter hit, they can follow up with full combo and boom, you know? So, but the mid kicks in general, they don't have any kind of benefits other than giving a knockdown on counter hit. And on normal hit, they just give you advantage. And that's it. But whenever your character is in face down position, keep in mind that all the low kicks will knock down on normal hit no matter what. Unless, in one exception, where you're face down, feet away. If they're too far, it won't trip. Yeah. So only in clean hit situation where it's really deep. Cool. So I think that covers pretty much all of the um, bases of getting about the ground, yeah? There's just one more, you know, there's like spring kicks and cross mm. chops, uh, and you know. And how do you do those? You could also do like combinations of side rolling then doing this low, you know, you could get yourself into these positions if you wanted to with every character whenever you're knocked down. Um, so spring kick, this is pretty character specific. Characters have a different animation. Right, Lay doesn't so have it. Yeah, so Brian, you know, is just back three plus four, or you could also do like back one plus two, and then do a cross chop. All these things are a different option and have their own benefits as well and their own risks. Right, and actually that just reminds me, there is actually one more. Uh, it's a Chinese gun, apparently. Oh yeah, well, okay, go on. I'll talk about something else. There's two more. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna knock Lay into the air with a jet upper, and then if he holds forward. Instead of being able to tech roll, he could actually do, this is what we call a Chinese getup. You just hold forward and then they'll notice you'll do a quick little spring kick and it also does a little bit of damage as well and it counts as a hit. Yeah, in certain knockdown situations, people are going to do like something like a running three at you as Oki. This Chinese getup, he can actually float them for a little juggle as well. Yes, that's correct. And, uh, but the only risky part is if he does, decides to do this and whiffs it, I could just launch yep. him again. So. Just keep in mind about that option. Yeah, and something new to this uh, tag game actually is what they, they're calling, uh, I think it's called quick tag roll, mm -hmm. or tag quick roll, I forget. But uh, basically in situations like say Brian's mock punch, on regular hit, you just to get hit by a pop, you'll see that the legs go up in the air like that. These situations you can actually hold back and your kick back will quickly back a lot of it. So this will prevent any OP setup. Another option that's been added to this game is that you can hit tag instead of holding back. And I'll get a quick tag and your tag teammate will come into it instead. 
All right, so now we're going to talk about running attacks. You can initiate this by tapping forward, forward, you know, dashing, and holding that, that forward direction. So if you run a few steps, you're going to be able to attack, tackle your opponent after about a few steps. After you tackle them, you have the option of punching them by either pushing the left punch or right punch buttons, which will allow you to uh, gain additional damage. Right, and new to this game is that you could actually do the same punch over and over again. Right, you don't have to alternate it. You can just push left punch, left punch, right punch, or you know, whatever combination. And to break this uh, punch uh, away, if that person is doing a one, you, can actually, you actually have to press it by a two because they're punching you with your left hand and you're deflecting it with your right hand. Exactly. Right, so let's see that in action. There you go. Wow, first <laughs> guess. If you press two right at the beginning of the tackle, you'll actually push him to the side. Uh, if you press 1 plus 2 right before they hit the ground, you'll actually flip them over and ah, ah, then you can punch them. And the tables have turned. There you go, exactly. And certain characters after the tackle, they can uh, initiate an arm break when they push 1 plus 2. Then to defend against that, once they start that arm break, you can push 1 plus 2 and then push 2 four times to... Uh, Quick succession. Yes. Repeatedly. It's all, yeah, it's all in one motion. Uh, you, you can break that arm break. Mm -hmm. Before we move on, uh, just one more thing, like some characters also have a reversal as well. Like Paul, Dragonov, when you're pressing 1-1-2, one, one, when they're about to punch you, mm -hmm. and they start off with either right or left punch, I'm not sure exactly which one, they'll actually reverse it and they'll get them in a reversal while they're on the ground. So basically what happened is that I did a right punch with JC here, and then Dragonov reversal it while he was in the tackle position. A couple characters have this, and it's completely character specific to those characters. Only, so. Cool. So, Bob, let's go back to more than two steps. <laughs> so now we're going to go beyond two steps. <gasps> right. And you get a few more options out of it. Uh, you can either push four or three or one plus two, and you get some moves out of it. We'll have JC uh, demonstrate those. So, that is a running three. It's like a generic running three that uh, most of the cast can, has that as a generic move. That is the generic four, which is the trip. So the running three is a mid, as well as well as that one plus, running one plus two, which is a, was a cross running chop. Running cross chop. And then you have one low option, which is the running four. Cool. So what about more than three steps, Bob? So now let's show uh, the ultimate, which is four steps. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. If you're able to be in this situation where you're on the complete other side of the screen, and hopefully the other characters aren't running at you first. Or if you end a combo and they're back rolling as yeah, you're running at them. Exactly. So especially in Tag Tournament 2, you're able to put uh, your, your opponent in a situation where they're all on the other side of the screen and you can start running at them. But this is what it looks like. So if you do a dash and you hold forward, and if you run all the way, you get a uh, shoulder charge, which is unblockable. And uh, there's no way to block it, but you can't evade it. Right, you can correctly. sidestep or sidewalk, but it's very late in the animation. Or you can even jump over them, but all of those things require extremely precise timing. Some practice. So let's Have see. you ever tried tagging up to avoid it, like tagging at the right moment? That would be crazy. Yeah, actually, it works. Um, your first character tagging out will get hit, but your second character can punish him. Oh, wow. Can we show that? Yeah. Oh. Or completely avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> right. mm, very right. nice, Mike. So that's very nice. one way, but how about for solo characters? How would they avoid it? You're screwed. <laughs> uh, you can actually sidestep it. Yeah. There you go. So you just gotta make sure. Is that we... a sidestep or a sidewalk? Oh, oh, side perfect. Step. <laughs> I'm actually okay. really good. I'm pretty impressed with myself. I think is you did it because you were in game mode instead of you know trying to show it. So it worked out pretty well. So it's not too hard, but it does take some practice. But it is doable. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna show some character-specific uh, running moves. So Dragon Up has uh, two special ones. He has a running two and a running three. So here's a running two, which is a mid punch, and he also has a running three which is a slide. So that's a it's good option when you're doing a run-in where you can actually mix up your opponent with those special uh, you know, tag moves or special running moves. Right, but that running low can only be done after three steps. And it's not often that you're going to have that much space. Right. But so. something unique to this tag game is that you can do running attacks off of the tagging. Exactly. So this will be very useful in situations where you're raw tagging and then bringing in a character and then you can force a mix-up basically. Right, yeah. especially a character that has a unique running attack. Yeah, it is. Granted yeah. that you have enough time to safely tag in. Right, and you can initiate that right when you push the tag button by pushing the, the three forwards and then mm -hmm. the button. Yeah, Just and, like can, that. and ra instead of like use, needing space for three steps, you could do this like right up in their face too, as long as you just press triple forward. Yeah, yeah so definitely in a nice situation where you can use that move where you normally would be a very unique situation. 
So normally when you're in the middle of the screen and you tag in your, your character, uh, he'll be able to run in and do some running attacks. But if you're at the wall, you, you lose that option because your character hops in as opposed to running in. And in those situations, you, can, you can't do any running attacks. Right. Your character just kind of jumps in. And so that's your only option at the wall. So that's a bit of a disadvantage if you're trying to do some running attacks because, again, only possible in the middle of the screen. Cool. All right, so there's another set of defensive options in this game, and we'll categorize them as reversals. So the first basic, most universal reversal in this game is called the low parry. So how do you do the low parry? You just tap down forward. Right, we covered this in the first episode a little bit, so you guys already have a general idea of how this works. Mm -hmm. You just tap down forward and opponent's doing a low attack. And then you'll sweep their leg, and then you can't use your bind anymore. We'll get to the combo system in the next episode. But you generally you use up your bind right away, and then you can go for a mini combo there. Or what have you, you know? Mm -hmm. Something like that. That's just an example. And then the next thing we'll go on to is... Actual, actual parries. Actual parries, <laughs> yeah. Sure, that sounds good to me. Um, Wang actually has... These are actually kind of character-specific. Um, depends on the character. Some characters don't have parries at all. Uh, some characters have moves that parry only in certain animations, like part of the animation. Uh, but those are called sabakis, which we'll get to. Right. I mean, you also have Law on your team. You can show... I mean, Law has a parry that's only punches and kicks for highs and mids. But he also has a punch parry with uh, just back one plus two that adds only punches. Yep. And, uh, you know, what good is a parry if you don't have a follow-up? So, let's show Wang. He, his parry is back one, and he actually parries multiple hits in succession. So if Bruce did like a string like one, two, one, two, it'll parry the whole thing by itself. <laughs> <laughs> Wang is awesome. And all I did was press uh, the parry button once, so... Basically what a parry is, it moves the move out of the way, uh, it doesn't stop your, the other po opponent's uh, animation of the move, it lets them still do it, but Law's parry is a little different exception, it's kind of very specific to him, so yeah, it actually pushes him out of the way and stops their animation, but Law gets something guaranteed out of it. Right. So and not all characters get something guaranteed after a parry. Yes, that's true. Like, uh, I think Ling does not, that's, that's true. neither does Force Law. Oh. <laughs> And Jin, you know, he only gets it in big whip situations. Right. So uh, there goes that. So the next thing we're going to talk about is reversals. Reversals are, are kind of like what Law's parry looks like, but they're a little different. Why are they different? Because you can chicken them. That's what a reversal is. Right, but generally also reversals that actually catch the move. Yeah, that's correct. And it catch the move, and they put them in like a throw-like animation. Right. So let's show, I want to do a, let's have Bob do a one, then a one again. Oh no, you got your arm! Ah. Here's a situation where it puts them you know, face down, like feet away. Right. Which you could get a combo from with a little bit. Oh, but not too far away. Nope, I'll All right. Well. <laughs> All right, so there we go. That's a reversal, and uh, there are some exceptions to this rule as well. So he can reverse also kicks as well, so that's happened to a one and a three. Boom! Oh. <laughs> Punch you in the mouth. And right. uh, certain characters, their reversals are chickenable, and other of them are not chickenable. Yeah, that's correct. So what's a chicken what bone? <laughs> it's what one of those is? animals that are not. I'm just kidding. They're delicious when you put rotisserie in front of them. So. Um, <laughs> the name rotisserie chicken. Oh, I see. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Strange. Right. So to chicken, uh, like we said, Tekken is a game about lambs. One, two, three, four. We know our numbers. Lambs? So <laughs> chicken lambs. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> right. I'm getting hungry. All right. But let's go back to the name of chicken, okay? So, so back in Tekken 3, I think it was, yes. when, you, when you would chick, when you would, when this chicken term that we're going to describe in a second would occur, the game would actually say chicken to chicken. you. Chicken. And it was and, actually a glitch, right. if I remember correctly. And no. because of that, the term has stuck around in the Tekken vocabulary. So Mike, why don't you go ahead and explain how to perform a chicken, and then we'll, that will teach Bob how to do it so he can demonstrate it to us. All right. Most definitely. So, like we talked about, Tekken is a game about limbs. Mm -hmm. So, let's say I reverse a left limb, left punch or a kick. So anything on the left side, you want to chicken it with a forward to push them away. Mm -hmm. Think of it as pushing them away and both left attacks. So you're going to be, if you sent out a left punch, you're going to be pressing forward one plus three. Right. So if they're doing a right punch or a right kick, mm -hmm. you do it in reverse. Well, not really reverse. Right. Forward and two plus four instead. Right. So, the right limbs. Yeah, the right limbs. So let's show a demonstration of that right now. So I'm going to have Bruce do a 1 and a 3, and then Bob's going to chicken it with a 4, 1 plus 3. Okay. 
chicken. 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 I don't yeah. know if it said it because we don't have sound here. But yeah. <laughs> chicken. Chicken. Delicious. And uh, we're going to show the same thing again with a right limb. And it's pretty much going to be the same animation, but it's going to just be with a different notation to chicken. Chicken. Yeah. Oh. There you go. That's wow, Bob, chicken. you really leveled up your game today. That's uh, quite impressive. Well, I was 50% right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so before we move on, there are certain types of moves in this game that you cannot chicken at all. I mean, reversal at all. Mm -hmm. So, an uh, easy example is knees and elbows. So And heads, if you're a Lisa. Just say. Yes, like, so it's more like... Oh, okay, all right, there's a lot of people have heads, I guess. <laughs> I think the entire cast has heads in this game. But. Maybe. <laughs> so anyway, these heads, elbows, and knees are generally unreversible. Yes, that's right. And generally unvariable by certain parries as well. Yes. So let's go ahead and show someone trying to counter one of these. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, I don't have a counter. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to have Bruce do a jab, and then I'm going to have Bruce do a back two after it, and I'm going to try to reverse that. No! <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> so you get a big knee to the face, and yeah, you should have one of that. Right, but uh, as I mentioned, Wayne's parry can parry pretty much everything in the game. This, like one except I don't remember what it is. But let's go ahead and show that he can parry Bruce's back two. Yeah. He likes to also parry the unblockable shoulder tackle I just found out. So Wang is parry is very special. Mm -hmm. It does a lot of stuff that a lot of other characters cannot do. Yep, that's very true. And uh, I guess Sabakis so are something else we should cover. We have Sabaki parries next. Mm -hmm. Sabaki parries are very weird. Yeah, it's um, hard to describe. It's hard. I think I think the general description is supposed to be um, it's a parry with a built-in attack. Yeah, that's correct. That's probably right. Um, so I guess technically Wang has a Sabaki parry as well. With that move, it's kind of more like it kind of like absorbs attack. an attack. There you go. So yeah, as you saw right there, it completely absorbed the animation, and he just went with the attack anyways. Kind of a bad example of a Sabaki parry, but luckily we still have Bruce on the screen, so we can show Sabaki parry with Bruce. Uh, Bruce's 442 is a high punch attack, but in certain parts of a move, he actually pushes aside a punch and cracks your neck. So it's, and it sounds really cool when you have sound. Ugh. 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 Oh my gosh, man, you're good at that. Much better than that than chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I think that about wraps up the reversal system of the game. We showed you low parries, parries. Reversals and Sabaki parries as well. Yeah, and of course, some characters have a little here and there of different kind of parries and different kind of you know different situations and stuff. Uh, that generally the basic three kinds of parries that you have in this kind of game or reversals. Cool. So let's move on then and tell you in general how not to get owned in Titan. Block. Alrighty. So in general, when you're a newbie, there's like a couple things that'll get you killed really easily. And in these first episodes, we've kind of highlighted a lot of these things, and hopefully. This is going to be a little summary of them. So number one, we want to safely back dash by hitting back and hold back. Okay, if, as long as you don't do back back neutral, you won't be able to get hit in it. And number two, if you get knocked down, don't back roll. Back roll generally is going to be a problem. It's yeah. when you don't know what's coming. Generally, you just either want to take a hit and tech roll off the ground, or you can just tech roll before that. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. If, if the tech roll is available. Right. As we said, you know, spikes and throws generally be in positions where you aren't going to be able to tech roll. And going back to the first episode even, generally if you get hit by an attack, do not hit buttons again afterward or you're probably going to get launched. Right. See, so in that kind of a situation, you know, Lars just got impatient, he tried to attack even though he was hit first, and he was at such a disadvantage that Lars going to get a free launch on him. Right. And this one's going to sound a little bit weird, but don't hit buttons. What? <laughs> yeah, I mean... This obviously Learned favors when to hit buttons. Okay, fine. I guess that's a little nicer way to say it, right? But you have to basically learn the flow of a Tekken match, and that's kind of what we've been trying to show you these things, especially in the first episode, second episode. And you basically pick your spots, you know, outzone your opponent, outspace your opponent, and basically find the opening to hit the buttons. Don't just go in there hitting buttons all day long, or your opponent's going to outspace you and basically get free damage on you. Yeah, and also make sure you, if you're going to try to attack them, make sure they at least connect. That's your main goal. Yeah, if you're going to attack and you're planning on whipping, you're just giving an opening to them. A so. very big opening, generally. Yeah. So yeah, definitely learn the range of your moves and make sure that they connect, even if it's on block. Yeah, uh, and also 
when they're trying to attack you, try to make them with with your movement. That's generally what Tekken is. It's a movement based game. So. Yeah, I mean, we we didn't really say the words before, but Tekken is very much a footsie based game. Yes. So if you come from a 2D background, footsie is probably a big word for you, or it's something that's important to your gameplay, and it's extra important in Tekken. And one thing you were saying earlier about uh, you know not pushing buttons, like it's okay to let your opponent attack you, right? Because right? you block certain moves that are punishable, mm -hmm. you get free damage for not right. doing anything. And there's no guard damage in this game either. Right. So you know you take those two things together, and you know it kind of. I mean that's kind of my philosophy behind Tekken that I'm generally more of a turtle player. So that's kind of the way I've learned the game. But it doesn't mean that you have to learn the game that way as well. You know you can learn to push buttons, but like Mike said, you got to learn when to push buttons and find the openings to push the buttons in. Exactly. So really briefly, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Tag Crash system. Now, Tag Crash is an option where your teammate will come flying through the sky and it will basically bring you in safely. Um, so you can only do this when your partner's life bar is flashing, as you can see on the screen right now. Generally, this life bar will only be flashing when you've lost about half your life or more, depending on the allegiance of your characters. And to execute a Tag Crash, the notation is 2 plus 5. Just so, like attack right, and you can only do it when your character is grounded. So, Bruce, if you could just hop kick Wang real quick so he's grounded. So, now when Wang is grounded here, if you wanted to get up off the ground, say you want to attack him for whatever reason, he could attack with his character and run out really slow, like he showed, we showed you before. So, perform a tag crash and basically stop Bruce's momentum, you would do 2 plus 5 right here. And your character comes in from the sky, and generally, this is a safe way to tag in. But if your opponent anticipates it, they can actually sidestep or sidewalk it as well. And we're going to go into more about this later because there are some advantages and disadvantages of using Tag Crash. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll get into that in the next episode. But for now, there you have it. This is one of the, what's the, another defense so, yeah, option? Like, okay, so basically, let's show them a basic example of what can happen if you just raw tag rather than using Tag Crash instead. Okay. So I'm on the floor. I decide not to use my Tag Crash. I'm just going to raw tag anyways. And Law comes in and gets launched again. And then I lose another right. much percent. You know? Because basically raw tags very unsafe in this game. Yeah, and there are only certain exceptions to that rule where you can kind of make them a little bit safer, but generally you're going to get killed. Right. So um, in this situation, you can just use a tag crash instead and safely get yourself in and block whatever attack you need to. So let's show them blocking. Them. Yeah, so generally it's safe on block, but the only time it won't be safe is when it, they create a situation where it whiffs. But that's up to you, and that's also spacing dependent. If they get close to you, you can tag crash. If they're far away, you can just safe tag. Right. So it's it all depends on the situation, but it's another tool in your arsenal. Yes. Cool. Yeah, wow, that was a good word for those combos, Bob. That was impressive. Thank you. You're welcome. But, you know, these first two episodes have been really defensive. You know, we've showed you guys a lot of the basics of the game, but it is a tag game, and the new exciting thing is all these cool combos you can do with both your teammates and the team synergy. So getting next, getting started next episode, we're going to start getting really offensive. You know, <laughs> yeah, we're going to get really, really offensive. We're going to talk about the combo system, red life, tag crash, Netsu rage, and the tag assault system specifically. You know, as well as damage scaling and some other stuff for you hardcore fans out there. Be sure to follow us, youtube.com slash levelupygame, as well as Twitter, Facebook, and Twitch slash levelupygame. And other than that, that about wraps up this episode. So tune in next time to Level Up Your Game. game.